Hello guys and welcome back to Car Obsession. Now before I kick this video off, I just want to explain something. The day I shot this video, I had one of my cameras stolen um, and that has impacted this video. Not too much because a lot of this video was filmed on my other camera, which wasn't stolen. So normally in my walk around videos nowadays, I drop in bits of B-roll, um, whilst I'm talking so you don't have to keep looking at the same thing for a prolonged amount of time um, but because I lost a lot of my b-roll footage because my camera was stolen um, I've not been able to include it in this video so if there are points where I'm focusing on one element for a bit too long I do apologize guys um, I haven't really got that much foot not that much footage to kind of um, incorporate into the into the video but it is what it is so uh anyway i hope you enjoy the video uh so without further ado uh let's play it hello guys welcome back to car obsession and welcome to another walk around this time you join me with the brand new ford focus st estate so as always i will take you around the car talk you through the specification and also give you my initial impression so yes here we have it the new Focus ST Estate, a car that I've been waiting to get, uh, to get my hands on for quite some time. So let me talk you through the outside. So of course the Focus ST is the sportier model, not quite as sporty as the RS of course, but this is still pretty racy. This car is sat 10 millimeters lower, and as you can see, it is rocking some big alloys. So this has 19 inch alloys as standard. Of course, it's got tinted rear windows. I've got ST styling as well. So I've got the sportier looking grille of course the st badge and a pretty good number plate as well uh, for my regular viewers you may recognize this number plate that's because i had it on a ford fiesta st line that i reviewed one or two years back like the fiesta st on the focus you get the gray kind of um, fins on the bumper the gray detailing um, grooves fins whatever you want to call them and this car is finished in performance blue, which is an optional extra, uh, which is exclusive to the ST. At the back, you have a roof spoiler, of course. Now you'll have to excuse my GoPros. Um, I haven't got a lot of time to film today, so I'm trying to quickly film this um, before I do the rest of my filming, hence why I've got GoPros glued to the car. At the back, you also have two cheeky rear exhaust pipes. I would want the finishing to look a little bit more shiny. They do look a little bit, I don't know, just not grubby, but they look a bit plain. Uh, obviously, this car isn't completely clean, and it has been driven today, but it's you know it's clean enough, clean enough for the camera. Now, whilst I'm here at the rear, I may as well show you the boot. So this has the electric hands-free function as an optional extra, which hasn't worked. I must admit, compared to the Focus Vignale I had a while back, the hands-free function on this car isn't quite as fluid. I do have the key on me, so I don't really know what it's doing. Hmm, that is quite bizarre. Anyway, let me just open it like that. So as always, I've got all of my filming crap in here, but I will cut to a, a shot where the boot is empty. But in essence, you have 608 litres at your disposal, which is very generous indeed. But if you want more space, you can, of course, fold down the 6040 rear seats to give you 1,653 litres worth of space. Uh, but the practicality doesn't end there. So folding the rear seats down is very easy. You've got levers either side. Um, I should have put that, that headrest down because that's kind of uh, triggering my mild OCD. Um, I have storage underneath the boot floor and there's also a spare wheel underneath there as well. Plus you have hooks where you can hang your shopping bags. Very practical indeed. Let's move on to the back of the car. Like any Focus, the ST offers a good amount of space. As always, the driver's seat has been set for me. I'm six foot two, so I am of course a taller chap. However, oh, I've just whacked my head on my, my camera that I've got set up here. <laughs> uh, however, even so, even though the seat is set for me, I've got a decent amount of room. Okay, knee room isn't quite as generous as a standard Focus model because you've got the chunky Recaro seats. Let me close the door so the lighting's a little bit better. 
but I still have a healthy amount of leg room. Now this car does have the panoramic roof as an option. So what has that done for rear headroom? Well, I haven't got loads of rear headroom, but I do have just about enough. Could you fit three adults back here? Uh, I think it might be a little bit snug in all honesty, um, but you know, for shorter journeys, it might be okay. There is a little bit of a transmission tunnel. So if I bring you down here, you will see. So let me get my hand sorted out. There is a little bit of a transmission tunnel, but it's not too big. Um, in the rear, you have some cubby holes. So you have a little bit of netting here where you can pop um, a book, like I've put my notepad here. I've got the spec sheet for the car as well. Cubby hole here where you can pop a bottle of drink. And you've also got an armrest with two cup holders. So bring it down like so, you'll see. I've got two cup holders here, very practical. And speaking of practicality, there's also a 12 volt socket in the rear as well. Uh, personally, I'd, I would probably prefer uh, a USB port, but it is better than nothing at all. So that's the rear covered. Let me step into the front. Actually, before I step into the front, I'm sure you, what you really want to know is the power this car has. So with that in mind, let me show you the engine. So here it is, the engine. The old Focus ST got a two litre turbocharged petrol. Well, it got a diesel as well, but I'm talking about the petrol for this instance. But the new car gets a 2.3 litre turbocharged petrol. It is related to the engine used in the outgoing Focus RS, but of course it does offer a little less power, but it's still you know, it still packs a fair punch. So it has 280 horsepower with a whopping 420 newton meters of torque. If you prefer that 10 pound feet, I will drop a subtitle below. Now this power is made through the front wheels via a six speed manual gearbox. Now for those of you yearning for four wheel drive, I'm afraid you can't have it. But if you don't want to have the manual and you want to have an automatic instead, there is some good news. There will be an eight speed automatic coming in a few months but for the time being, this car is manual only. In regard to performance, this will hit 62 miles per hour in 5.8 seconds, which is quite an improvement on the old car, and the top speed is 155 miles per hour. If you're concerned about MPG, that is 39.8 on a combined run. The CO2 emissions, I don't know off the top of my head, so I will drop it in as a subtitle. Now the engine has a, quite a few clever features, one of, it, one of which is anti-lag. So this technology has been inspired by the Ford GT. And in essence, what it does is when you have the car in sports mode or track mode, when you lift off the accelerator, the turbo keeps spinning. Therefore, when you put your foot back down, there's no turbo lag, which is very clever indeed. It makes the car more responsive. And do you notice it? Yes, you do. Now, speaking of clever tech, this also has an ELSD, so this has an electronic limited slip diff. Now, it's not a mechanical one, it is an electric one. In essence, you have hydraulic crutches, uh, crutches. You have hydraulic clutches within the transmission, and when the car thinks that wheel spin is about to happen, it sends torque to the, well, it basically sends the torque across the front axle to give you better grip. Now, Ford states that this is better than a mechanical limited slip diff because it is proactive as opposed to reactive because a mechanical limited slip diff that will wait for the wheel spin to happen then correct it whereas this car will actually correct it before it happens so yes this is proactive not reactive uh, hopefully that makes a bit of sense of course you have big brakes for better stopping power and ford actually states that the new focus st has four times the stopping power of the old car four times that is incredible so a lot of hard work has gone into this car um so i'd love to see what they would do with the, the new rs because i'm sure that's going to be something rather special um so yes this this engine does pack a fair old punch and in fact for the petrol focus sts out of the all all four that have been made this is the freest revving car so you know, this is more eager to get to the red line let's put the bonnet down like so Let me take you inside the car now. Now, of course, as part of the ST specification, you get Recaro seats, and these are fantastic, guys, because not only are they supportive, but they are comfortable, and unlike other fast forts in the past, they aren't set too high. So 
a common complaint from older fast forwards is that the seat feels like it's set too high. So it feels like you're sat on the car as opposed to in it. But there's no such problem with the new Focus ST because yeah, there were car rows. You know, when you step in, it actually feels like you're stepping into a sports car, which is what you want from a car like this, really. Speaking of um, sporty, you have a flat bottom steering wheel with the ST badge on it. And I really like the chunkiness of it. It really feels nice in the hand. Uh, let me get inside the car like so. Oh, and I can talk you through the specification. Now, unlike the previous Focus ST, which you could have in ST1, ST2, or ST3 trim levels, the new ST only has one trim level, which is simply ST. Now, it is quite pricey, I won't lie. So for the estate, it starts from, well, for the petrol version, it starts from £33,095. This car that I'm sat in right now is a bit more. This is £36,490 because I do have a few options, including the head-up display. Oh, that engine does sound good. So I've got a head-up display, wireless phone charging, the panoramic roof. Uh, what else is optional? Um, the paintwork, and I've got the the performance pack, which interestingly, if you go onto Ford's online configurator, the performance pack is only available for the hatchback. So I, I'm a bit confused as to why it's on the estate. So I don't actually think you can get it for the estate. But the performance pack, if I pop it into sport mode, bear with me. Now I do have launch control. So if I go to, sorry, I'm faffing about guys, I do apologize. There we go, so launch control not available, obviously, because, uh, so I think it's probably because I'm, I'm in new, neutral. Launch control not available, okay. Um, not too sure what's come up with that message, but yes, this does have launch control. It also has a light to indicate when to shift gear. I've got rev matching, um, launch control, rev matching, shift indicator. Uh, what else have I, have I forgotten? Uh, I've got the, uh, also as part of the um, performance pack, I have um, ambient gliding, which you can't see now because it's too light. Um, oh, track mode, sorry. Yes, yeah, so that's the other, um, let me turn that aircon off. Sorry, the climate controller should say. So I do have a race track mode, which you would only get if you got the performance pack. So if I didn't have that, I'd have slippery, normal, or sport. And unlike other Focus models where you've got the buttons for the driving modes down here, they are actually on the steering wheel. So you, they are easier to use and quicker to get to. And what better still, what I really like is you have a button that puts you straight into the sport mode. Um, I'm a big fan of that. So yes, well done Ford. Uh, going back to the specification, uh, as I mentioned, I've got climate control, well, dual zone climate control. In fact, I've got front and rear parking sensors, as well as a reversing camera, of course. I've got park assist. Um, oh no, the head up display, I was about to mention that, but I've already mentioned that and that is optional. Uh, but as standard, I have an eight inch touchscreen with DAB radio, Bluetooth, uh, smartphone connectivity and navigation, as you can see there. I've also got a good amount of safety features as well, although let's face it, uh, that won't be the biggest priority for someone buying this car, but it's good to know you have it just in case you need it. Um, and yes, this does have a lot of kit, but personally, I would want this car to be a little bit cheaper. This is a fast Ford, which in my eyes, is all about offering performance to the working man or woman. And I think this car may put some people off because of its price. Now, if you go for the diesel the hatchback, you can have that for under 30,000 pounds, but let's face it, not that many people are going to want the diesel, particularly as um, diesel isn't flavor of the month right now, so yeah. Uh, if you want the petrol hatchback, that's about £31,000, give or take. Uh, let's speak about st um, storage. There's a good amount of storage. The, the door bins are of a decent size. Got my bottle of drink in there and a few other bits and bobs. Got a slot here where you can pop your smartphone. And as I've mentioned, I've got wireless phone charging as an option. So that's quite handy. Little, little slot here. Got a 12-volt socket there, USB port. Got a cubby hole in here, which... You can use as cup holders because these adjust, which is very smart, very handy. Uh, or you can just use it as a general cubby hole. Got a little slot where you can pop the car key. You've got an armrest, which 
can be adjusted like so. You can slide it forwards or backwards. Lift it up and you've got a tray in there where you can pop some loose change or lift it up and you've got a bit more storage in there as well, as well as a USB port. Sunglasses holder, which is quite handy on a day like today because we actually have some sun in the UK. Uh, one other thing I've got to speak about is I do have sports pedals. And the healing tie is quite nice. Uh, now, actually, going back to the rev matching I mentioned earlier, now Ford states that you can turn it off. Uh, I have checked the manual, and I can't find a way of doing it. So the manual states that you go to um, settings, like so, go to vehicle settings, oh, no, that's driver assistance, and apparently, according to, to the manual, to turn off the rev matching, it should be in this menu, but it isn't. So, yeah, I'm a bit confused about that. Um, uh, oh, actually, I forgot to mention, let me turn them on, actually. Yes, I know, I know, I know, I know, be quiet. Also part of the specification, I have adaptive LED headlights, which are very bright indeed. And at the rear, the rear lights are also LEDs. There we have it. So yes, as I mentioned, this car is £36,490. Let me just double check the spec sheet to make sure I haven't missed any of the optional extras. So the options on this car, so hands-free tailgate, wireless phone charging pad, head-up display, performance pack, oh, blind spot uh, information system, so that's blind spot warning, uh, the panoramic roof, or as Ford call it, the panorama roof, and the performance blue paint, we'll see it, uh, paint work. So, yes, yeah, so this car is £36,490. £36, so I completely forgot about the blind spot warning, actually. So yes, there we have it, the brand new Focus ST. Apologies if this video has seemed a little bit rushed, but I wanted to make it. Um, however, I haven't got a lot of time to do so. Um, because yes, as you can see, the sun is starting to set and I haven't even filmed my in-car bit. So yeah, I really must dash. So with that in mind, I think it is time for me to end. So yes, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, but yes, if you have enjoyed it, be sure to like, subscribe and to ring my bell so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.